Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Hacking Net Self Stories podcast. Today, we have an absolute legend on the podcast, none other than John Lindsay from lindsayselfstoragegroup.com. Now, John has just brought a book out called The Sexy Side of Self Storage. What a name! I love it. I quizzed him about the book. I asked him his opinions on the COVID and the market and what, what's, uh, what, how do we determine valuation of a property because he's a broker as well as an operator. This guy is a fountain of knowledge. And just before I actually came to the office, well, the office is next door to my house, but I got absolutely soaked. And so I was literally recording the podcast with wet hair and I look an absolute not a legend, probably a legend. So if you are watching this on YouTube or LinkedIn, my apologies. Okay, guys, girls, have a listen to John Lindsay because he is phenomenal self-storage operator, broker, and just a fountain of knowledge when it comes to self-storage. You literally are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, my friends. And having people on the podcast like this it is it's so motivating for, for me speaking to AJ, speaking to Am Ballard, speaking to all these legends. I can't obviously not mention Dave Davies. I just um and James Bonney stands out as well. Absolutely there's Joe Moon. Ah, oh, I just absolutely I apologize now if I haven't actually mentioned your name and you've been on the podcast. There's just so many people that come on this podcast, and I'm absolutely uh, it's just an uh, it's just an honor and a privilege to be part of this industry and part of speaking to you guys and learning from you guys because I always learn something from every single call I'm on. So thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you listening and hopefully you'll enjoy this episode as well. So without any favor ado, here is John Lindsay. Thank you for listening. So John Lindsay, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for coming back on. Thanks for having me, man. Great to see you again. I'm, I feel like we're, we're getting closer and closer to sharing a pint in person as opposed to just sharing the Zoom screen together. Uh, I can't wait. I was just saying before, before we actually pressed record and I was so looking forward to coming to AJ's do um, and well, his, his big um, convention that he's putting on. And I just, I just, I can't wait to meet everybody in America. But unfortunately, I was letting you know that if I go to America and I've got to self-isolate for 14 days in a hotel room and I just, I just can't do it. So yeah, mate, hopefully very, very soon we'll be seeing each other very, very soon and sharing that pint. Well, hopefully, maybe we should just have AJ move his event to Portugal and then you guys can come join. <laughs> I'm down for that. Let's, let's, let's have a word. Yeah. So, uh, uh, John, I was looking back at the previous podcast. So you was on and it was around about a year ago. And so for the people who didn't hear that episode, who is John Lindsay and what do you do, my friend? Yep. So uh, I'm John Lindsay, co-founder and president of Lindsay Self Storage Group. Uh, my family's been in the storage business for 50 years. We have bought, built, sold, brokered, managed stores, everything in between. Um, but in 2012, my brother Alan and I started Lindsay Self Storage Group, and we help owners and operators buy and sell self storage facilities all over the US, Europe, and Asia. That is awesome. Do you still have operate your own facilities as well? Because I remember last time we was on, you actually mentioned to me about owning your own facilities. Correct. So my family still owns about a dozen stores. Um, so Alan, my brother, really spearheads the operations side of our platform, and he oversees all those. And I tell people, especially in, in the brokerage line of work, how am I supposed to help someone buy and sell storage facilities and understand the intricacies if I've never owned one myself? Uh, oh. It just has always been kind of a silly thing to me. How, it's like, how could you have someone sell your house if they've never lived in one? You got to know what to look for at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, I absolutely love that. And just before we go any further on this podcast, I was doing my research today and I believe mine and your dad's are very, very similar. Tough, hardworking guys who never, ever stop. And the way you mentioned your dad, that you've never, ever seen somebody as hardworking as your dad. And that's exactly the same as my dad as well. And did, did you, am I right in saying your dad's in his 80s and he still comes to the office every, every like four, four days out of seven or something? Oh yeah. He's downstairs right now. He turned 87 this year. Uh, we couldn't get rid of him if we tried. I think he will honestly work until the day he dies. He loves it. And it is honestly the one thing that's kept him alive this long. It's so good for him. Yeah. That, that's exactly the same as my dad as well. He just never, ever stops. Every time I go around to his house, don't matter if it's nine o'clock in the morning or nine at night, he's always potting around doing something, working. He just, he just doesn't stop. Yeah. No, it's honestly, it's, it's the greatest thing they could do. And Honestly, he's a treasure trove of information. He's just this endless encyclopedia of useless storage knowledge that we, we, we harness when we need it. So uh, it's, it's pretty fun to have him around. We love it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So how has COVID-19 affected um, your business and uh, has it changed the way you value businesses, you value self-storage now in America? So uh, twofold question, I'd say one, COVID has been really good for self-storage across the map. I think we were talking about in the UK and Europe and in the US, um, any time of uncertainty bodes very well for storage, whether good, bad, people have money, don't have money, remodeling the house, renting instead of owning, they're all times of fluctuation and change. And during COVID, we just saw a lot of that, a lot of migrating people, a lot of moving home, a lot of canceled college or you know work from home, office, things like that. So all of that furthered the storage industry. And just like 08 to 11, we saw storage just kind of hit the gas pedal last year. And then what followed that was all these private equity funds saying, wow, storage is doing great while my hotel and my movie theater and everything else in between is crashing into the floor. I'm going to pump more money into storage. So now we see all these big private equity funds and hedge funds just chasing storage when we were already at this relative peak of storage. And it just kind of like hit the nitrous boosters and sent us into this next stratosphere. Um, it's crazy. We're seeing record prices, record low cap rates, record deal size, record volume. I mean, it's just a wild year. And what's changed for us is like things on the brokerage side just take a little bit longer now because, you know, a third party appraisal or a site visitor survey just gets a little backlogged. But other than that, we've been, we've been busy as we've ever been. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think I was talking before, and I've mentioned this on podcasts previously, that my sisters are in the wedding industry and you feel kind of guilty because they're struggling. And obviously with in, with, in England, um, people couldn't have weddings for more than 30 people at times, more than 16 and 15 people. It's just been crazy. But in self-storage, we, we hit a bump, first of all, when COVID was first announced and lockdown first happened. We lost a lot of a lot I've lost a bit of square footage, but after that, straight away, it just came bouncing back. And we've had three years of growth in three months. It's been absolutely incredible for us. Well, and that's I think that initial scare, you know, April, May, we didn't really know what was happening in the world. There yeah. was no direction, a lot of uncertainty. So everyone saw this tick. It was really a rise in accounts receivables that happened. And once we kind of saw that upswing, we have not stopped. It has just been through the roof, you know, once people got comfortable with migrating with masks on and going back to work or Zooms or got settled in their work from home life for kids going back to college, you know, people have found ways to mitigate their circumstances and, but storage has just continued to thrive. It's been awesome. And I think, again, it's just like, just like syntax items, cigarettes, tobacco and booze just does really well in times of uncertainty. And it's, um, it's crazy to see it just continue to crush it through one of the most odd times in not only American history, but world history. Yeah, it definitely is odd. And has it changed the way you value self-storage in America then? So um, not how we value it from a standpoint of just like COVID impacts, but I will say a couple things we consider obviously is, you know, if a store had an exceptional year last year, well, was that just solely due to COVID or is that a historical upward trend they're having? You know, especially the mom and pop store, it's been around for 20 years. If they've been, you know, kind of chugging along at this revenue stream and then there's just this big uptick in 2020 and we're like, well, that's because of COVID, you know? And so we've, we're mindful of that when doing historical yeah. trends and valuations. But then this year, again, we're just seeing record cap rates, debt still cheap, uh, the U.S. government refuses to admit that there's inflation, although the price of everything is out the wazoo. Um, and then I, I think more than anything, the biggest thing we're paying attention to right now is this new Biden tax plan that is being proposed for next year would absolutely decimate the sales process for the next three years in the U.S. economy because capital gains are, could jump to 40 percent and they could eliminate the 1031 exchange, which is what people use to you know, trade properties and to further their capital gains to further transactions. So um, both of those could really put to halt on transactions. So right now we are seeing everyone selling. If they're considering selling in the next five years, everyone is getting out right now because it's great time to sell anyways with the market, but then layer that in with this possible tax implication they're like, screw it. I was going to wait two more years, but I'm going to sell now and just take it and get out. Wow. And is there still buyers then? Is there still a lot of buyers oh, looking to buy? There are more buyers than we know what to do with right now. The problem is finding inventory. I mean, stuff, it, it hits the market, sold like that. It's crazy. 
So it must be fantastic to be a broker at the minute. It's uh, it's. Well, I mean, but but there's there's so much competition on our side. You know, we're yeah. we're just you know, it's a it's a small pool. There's you know maybe half a dozen of us that you know battle for a lot of the same deals. And um, yeah, it's a it's a great time. But you know, uh, there's also the writing on the wall. We know this can't last, and this will not be the forever. You know, I feel like we can all agree since the world financial crisis in 08, we've been on an upward trend for the past decade ish. Um, and despite the COVID blip, I think, you know, storage has just been on a high for 10 years and there's gotta be a lull at some point, as much as I'd love to think we can just keep crushing it. You know, there's, there's gotta be some, some reset. So, um, and I, I don't think it's going to be impactful of the business itself, but I think the transactional market will, will hit some type of slow. And I think this plan could be the big one in the U S at least yeah. Do, do you know what? Before I start talking about your your book, The Sexy Side of Self Storage, and by the way, I absolutely love that name. Uh, I want I want to know where that name came from first uh, as well. But what? Before I ask about the book, what are the biggest drivers for valuation in America, and what do you guys look for? Is it? I, I want to find out if it's a little bit different from what we do in the UK here. No. So I mean, whether I'm valuing a store in Hong Kong or the Netherlands, the UK or the US, I'm looking at you know what's their net operating income. I want to know, you know, again, ex- exactly what their occupational history has been. Have they been stable for a year? Did they just hit 90%? You know, are they still in lease up? You know, what's their historical trend of the property? Because that helps tell a story. And then also, if it's a single owner operator that's had for 20 years, I want to know, okay, are they below market rents? Have, when was the last time they raised their rents? Is there upside for a buyer? So we kind of take all those factors into play amalgamate them into what we believe to be a, a, a good number. And then we can compare it to historical trends in comparable markets. You know, say, hey, is this a good dollar per square foot? Is this reflective of what we're seeing? And if so, cool, we're good to go. And if not, what do we need to do to relook at our valuation to make sure that we really hit the number on the head? Yeah, absolutely love it. So I'm just going to move tax a little bit. Then I'm going to talk about your book, The Sexy Side of Storage. Where did that title come from? <laughs> I absolutely love it. When I saw it, I like thought, that. that is John Lindsay all over the place. So I was in my book pitch meeting. I, I write a lot. I love writing. I write all the time. And I've always wanted to do a book. And fall of 19, I started the process. And I actually used to intern for this publishing firm in college. So it's come full circle. Um, but I walked in and we were talking. And I, I remember telling them, they were like, kind of asking me, like, why do you like storage so much, whatever? And I was like, you know, I was like, storage isn't as sexy as being like, oh, there's the hotel I own or there's the office building, my name on it. I was like, but the returns are damn sexy. And they were like, well, that's what we got to call it. They got to call it the sexy side of self-storage. We got to show people why this is such a great business as we all know it is. And, you know, again, I don't, I don't really care, you know, what the business looks like. If it makes the kind of money that storage does count me in. So yeah. um, it's been, it's been so fun to write this book. Absolutely. And it's also the lifestyle of stories that stories can give you as well. I'm, I'm just forever grateful. I think it's a gift that carries on giving. And yes, there's barriers to entry. But for me, storage is sexy. I, I love it. So what made you write this book then, John? What was the reason behind it? So it's, it's really twofold. One, you know, we wanted to show our history in the industry, our trials and tribulations, our wins, our losses. We wanted you guys to feel a part of that process. And really, I wrote this for the single owner operator. I wanted you guys to, to kind of avoid and navigate the issues that we've had over the years with certain things, but also show you guys that, hey, we're, we're the best at what we do. And this is why, because we've had these great and bad and not so good experiences, but this is how we've succeeded over the years and have become a really household name in the storage industry. But it's also to show, hey, this is how you maximize your value when you do go to sell. These are the things you need to think about. These are the trends going on. These are the ways that we look at building a relationship and really taking your side out to promote it in its best light and a way for you to really shine amongst all of the private equity and hedge funds and publicly traded REITs. I, I love it. Do you, do you know the book doesn't actually come out in the UK until the 8th of June? So I haven't actually read it. I've been trying to read as many reviews as I can and what people say about the book. And do you, do you know one thing I think you should do as well? I'd love it if you started a podcast called The Sexy Side of Self Storage. I think you on a podcast would absolutely be brilliant. Well, maybe, maybe that's the next venture. I got time now. I'm done writing a book. I got you know all the time in the world. Let's do it. <laughs> How long did it take, by the way, to write this book? 
So it's actually interesting. I started writing probably about Christmas of 2019 and was like two thirds of the way through when COVID hit. And I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll take a couple of weeks off. My routine got thrown and well, fast forward six months and I had stopped writing for six months. And yeah. I remember it was, uh, I was heading to Thanksgiving with my girlfriend and we were up, we were going to Minnesota to see her family. And she's like, I'm tired of hearing about you not finishing your book. She's <laughs> like, you're going to sit down and finish this because I want it done by Thanksgiving. She was like, Gee, you, I'm tired of it. Just finish it. So I sat down over the month of November and finally wrapped it up and got it done and everything. So, but it, uh, it was, it was fun to get it done. I love what we do. I love storage. I love talking about it, but I think I, like everyone else, we got derailed. COVID was weird. It was yeah. an odd time. People's routines are out the window and it's, it's hard to get that flywheel moving again once you lose the momentum. Yeah. So do you actually enjoy the process then, John? Because I've got a couple of friends and some people I've, I've interviewed on another podcast of mine and who, who are authors and they absolutely hated the process, but you sound like you've actually enjoyed it. I loved it. I mean, I write every day. I really enjoy writing. Um, but you know, it's going to, you know, I'd like some time before I go write another one. It is time consuming, but it is, it is fun to put all these things down, but you know, I've already like the second I got it out, I was like, shoot, I forgot this story. I forgot that, but yeah. I guess I just need to write another book now. You know, yeah. it's time to do another one. Yeah. I, I, that was my next question. Actually. I've, I've heard you write every day. I listened to a podcast that you was on the other day and what, what do you write about? And is it self storage or is it affirmations or, or is every it a journal? Day. Yeah. So, I mean, I journal affirmations, uh, you know, could be just days. It's just, just putting pen to paper, whatever comes out, the to-do list. I mean, anything that comes out, but it's that process of, of writing every day. And there's a great book called the miracle morning by Hal Elrod. And, yeah. you know, one of his things is, is that, you know, reading, writing prayer affirmation every day. And um, that has certainly become a major part of my life over the past seven years. Yeah, Hal Elrod is an absolute legend, isn't he? What he's come through as well. He's battled some some weird illnesses and in his times, and yeah, he's, he's an absolute legend. Will yeah. Will you actually be putting your book out on audio? <laughs> I always ask so, people. <laughs> I've I've had a lot of requests for audio and other languages. So we're talking to the publishing firm now about best process for getting that done. It is available on Kindle and in hard copy. Um, and Lisa, I know June 8th is the release date. So everyone's got to patiently wait for a little bit, but it'll be out. Um, but yeah, the ne next step is to do an audio version and then hopefully translate it in a couple languages. So um, yeah, I'm genuinely looking forward to reading the book because I'm, I'm a stories nerd and I, I read a, a heck of a lot anyway, but anything to do with self-storage, I've just bought AJ Osborne's book on, um, on Audible. I didn't actually know it was an Audible. Actually, that's a first book in, in God, six months or so that I've actually bought uh, a hardback of and I was reading it, reading it, reading it. I've, re I've read the whole book, but when I saw it on audio, audio, I was like, oh, this is terrific. So yeah, I hope you put yours on there on audio as well. Well, so we will. And it's, and it's great because it not only like, I think anyone who's been in the industry could get something from it. You know, newcomers in the industry looking to yeah. get in, existing owner operators, I think will will generate the most out of this book. Um, we talk about everything from, you know, wins in our process to global trends to everything in between. So, I mean, it, it's, it covers a wide spectrum of topics, but um, if you're in storage and you want to get more, you want to maximize value of your site, you should read this book. Absolutely. And I've read, I've read parts of it and looked up parts of it. And part of it, you said that the industry is ready for disruption. What do you mean by that? And how can we disrupt this, this industry? Because I'm always a big believer in that. I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at ways, as Gary Vee says, spend 10% of your time looking at how you're going to put yourself out of business. And so I'm always looking at the new automations that are coming out. I'm looking for the new trends. And that, that line there really caught my eye because how, how can we disrupt this industry? What, what's going on there then? So I'll tell you, I, I was on a Zoom this morning at 6 a.m. with um, the Asian Self Storage Association. And I, I told them flat out, I said, I've never seen such cool tech as I have at the projects we've worked on in Asia, whether it's Hong Kong, Beijing, Singapore, you name it. They just decimate the rest of the world in technology. I mean, they they can open a, a unit with a QR code and an app from a thousand miles away, or they have thumbprint scans to get in their facility and, you know, all their stuff's automated. And this, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. And we're starting to see that in the US. There are great companies like like Red Dot and 10 Federal have come out with you know, fully automated storage platforms. And we've seen groups like uh, Store Local and Tenant Inc. coming out with their new Hummingbird platform, which is, I think, the future as far as 
you know, operation software is concerned and allows owners to, to really own and control their own data. Uh, Janus came out with their no key system. You know, you can get into the facility with just the swipe of the phone and things like that are awesome. But every time I go to Asia, I'm just wowed at how well they operate that. And it's funny because they're a bit backwards from the U.S. They're still figuring out their whole real estate game and no one really owns their buildings and you can get kicked out of your leases really early, but they're so much better on tech than we are. And so I think there's some disruption to be had with that. And over the past three to five years, we've seen some really cool new products come out, some big acquisitions, some big roll-ups, you know, especially with the storable roll-up with SiteLink and StoreEdge. And there's just been a lot of amalgamation, but I'm, I haven't really seen that one boom moment yet that says, wow, this has turned the industry upside down. And, and I too, like you, I'm waiting for it. It's got to come soon because uh, we're on the cusp. There's too much money being dumped in this industry for someone to not come through and totally rock everything. Uh, I love I love the fact that people like you, people like AJ, people like Travis Morrow, we're always looking at ways this industry is going to be disrupted because obviously with the hotel industry and Airbnb, you, you've got that at the back of your mind because I just think it's so good as the industry and I don't want to be on the wrong side of any technology, any disruption. And so we're actually, uh, obviously I did a debate with Travis um, at the conference, European conference about automation. We're actually opening our first manless facility this year as well. It's a new build. It's going to be absolutely fantastic, completely manless. Or oh, when I say completely manless, of course there'll be people tidying up, you know, going cleaning, et cetera, uh, making sure that there's no, there's no, no problems inside the units, et cetera. But yeah, in essence, it's a manless facility. So we're really, really looking forward to that. So in terms of disruption, then you believe it will come in the form of technology? Correct. I mean, I, I would be hard pressed to find, you know, uh, you know, unlike for instance, you know, we used to store files at our office and now there's this huge online, you know, data storage platform. You can't physically condense someone's goods in their unit and put it online. You just, there's no replacement for that period. Yep. You know, and I don't think Valet will ever replace the storage business. I think Valet I is a nice supplemental business. Um, so I think, okay, people are going to look for ways to streamline and save money and make the business more efficient. How do they do that? One of the biggest overheads, unfortunately, is staff. Now, I still debate, you know, whether I can see benefits to both sides. I, I still, am a, I'm a people person. People come in to rent a unit, you know, death, divorce, downsize. They need to have their hand held and walk through. But there's also markets where I say, nope, just automate it. That's all you need there. So I, I can see both sides depending on where you are and what you're looking to accomplish. And, and we've we've sold a number of products in both realms and we think they're, they both have value. But I think tech is the one thing that has continued to, to really accelerate this industry. Because I remember when I first got in in 2012, up until even a couple of years ago, I'd go to conferences and they'd someone be giving a, a, a speech on like how to set up your business Facebook page. And I'm like, as a millennial, I'm like, Facebook was out like 10 years ago. What are you guys doing? You know what I mean? It's just like, I felt like storage has always been on a bit of a lag to normal tech trends. Um, so it's cool to see this massive influx of tech hitting the storage space now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you as well, because we've we've got a big uh, facility, well, big compared to our standards. We've got over 500 units, and I don't believe that can ever be manless. And the the site we're opening that's going to be manless is only going to have 200 units. So for me, it's, it's kind of the size. Um, a 200 units, I, I don't think it's a problem being manless at all. But we'll also have the option where you can actually ring through to our call center and you'll be able to speak to somebody as and when you want to as well. So we'll, we'll have that side of it as well. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely the same way as you. I'm a people person. I can't imagine not having the guys and girls working with us that we've already got. And I just, I can't imagine, I don't want to go completely away from that. However, I just think it validates some areas that, probably when you look at the look at the numbers, probably wouldn't have worked with staff on site just purely yeah. because of how much overheads it is. So it allows, it opens up to market where where it wouldn't have, have been possible to open a self-storage facility previously in an area, but now it does because we can actually have a manless concept there. Well, and I think too, like we've seen a lot of companies like um, Stories and 10 Federal and Red Dot, you know, if they open... Uh, like a smaller lot where you wouldn't have been able to build an office and have it staffed for a 15,000 square foot facility in the U S well, now you slap a kiosk in there and you can, you know, FaceTime with a home office somewhere. 
all of a sudden you can maximize that one acre in the great location and actually make it a viable storage product because you save 40 grand a year on staff. So yeah. you, know, you don't have plumbing, you don't have to build an office. And like all of a sudden we're seeing a whole new wide array of storage facilities becoming viable builds. Um, but again, like that's cool, but I don't think that is, is disrupting the space yet. I'm waiting for the, the Airbnb essentially of storage to come in and, and make us all say, oh no, we should pay attention to this. <laughs> Yeah, what, what do you think to the guys, by the way? Because the guys who um, or some somebody something to do with Airbnb, they've actually started something to the, in, in the self-storage industry, haven't they, in America? Yeah. Are you aware yeah. of? Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a neighbor and spare foot. Yes, neighbor, and there's, yeah. There's been a lot of, you know, third-party aggregators, and that's great. And there's a huge place for that in the industry. And some owners love it, some don't. You know, it works well for others, just like automated is good for some, not for others. Um, and it's been impactful, but I will, I, I don't think, I would say it has uprooted the industry and turned it on its head. It has not made storage obsolete. It is a facilitator of storage facilities and they happen to make a lot of money in the process versus Airbnb has totally ripped away from the hotel industry. It yeah. is, it is provided an alternative to hotel. Whereas, you know, the aggregators just make money off of continuing to rent storage units. So until there is another solution for physically storing 200 square feet worth of goods in a storage facility, um, i yeah, you know, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stick on storage. That's where my money is. Yeah, you also mentioned your book. Storage properties are recession-proof commodity with value add opportunities right for buyers. Now that really gets my juices going because it's the value add opportunities that get me so excited. For somebody who's sitting on the fence right now, because we've I've been on a lot of uh, real estate podcasts recently, and so we've got a lot of people that are new to self stories listening to this. Would you still recommend it's a good time to get in the industry? And why is self-storage such a good industry to be to be involved in? So I'll tell you, it depends what your return thresholds are and what your timeline is. Now, if you want to get in, the net, in, in one to three years, now is not a good time to be buying storage because you're buying at a very relative peak. And it's tough because it's tough to, to say no because debt is just so cheap right now. And you're like, man, Great time to get in. Economy's going. I'm liquid. Debt's cheap. Let's buy it. Well, I just don't see there being a better seller market in the next three years than we have right now, period. I, I think we can all, we are at this relative peak. And unless we go to like a negative interest rate environment, I just, I don't know how much lower you can get stateside than where we are now. Um, and so I think if you're looking to sell in the next three to five now is the best time ever to sell your facility, period. Especially in the US with tax you know, implications going in next year, I could not think of a better time to sell your storage facility than right now. But if you're looking to buy and you've got a longer term horizon or a flexible horizon, what's called the 5, 10, 15, 20 year horizon, and you've got a little bit of a movable target, yeah, now is a great time to buy. You can get debt for absolutely nothing. So if you've got cash to put to work, and you don't need to kind of get in and out in a short horizon. I buy as much as you can right now. So it's kind of this odd middle ground where I'm like, yeah, it's a great time to be both a buyer and a seller, just depending on you know what your horizon is and what you're looking to really get out of your projects. John, do you know what? I think that is one of the best answers I've ever heard for that and full <laughs> respect for it because it just depends. It depends on your circumstances. As soon as you said it, I was like, oh my God, that is so good. And <laughs> for, for me, storage, um, because a lot of my friends uh, see or the perceive how easy self storage is when there's a lot of there's a lot there's a lot more to it than than it than than it looks I suppose from the outside uh, but not really too many moving parts I always say to my friends that yet yeah, storage is fantastic but if you're looking to get rich quick this is not the industry for you it will always always guarantee you to get wealthy long term but it'll never ever do it quickly and I just well, love how how you put that. I could not agree more. And I tell people all the time, storage is like batting singles every time. Your batting average is going to be yeah. great and you're going to crush it. But like, don't expect to go hit a home run on every deal. But you'll get on base every time. You'll, you'll hit your returns. You'll clip coupons. You'll just move through. And if you want to make money over the long term and build wealth, build generational wealth, storage is, is the game for you. But if you want to have the sexy pump and dump in and out in one to three, it's a dangerous game to play in this industry. Ah, uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. That is awesome. So, how how was the sales, by the way, gone of the uh, of your book so far? The sexy side of self storage. Well, we we pre sold out the first round. Amazon just brought in some more. So, 
Yeah. So we're, uh, I think they're just got restocked. So go, go order a book before they sell out again. I've already pre-ordered mine, buddy. I can't wait till June 8th comes along. <laughs> we're looking forward to it, man. And like I said, I've, I've had requested it in a couple other languages. So once we kind of get to that next step and get a few more fulfillments, we'll do that. Uh, like on our Asia thing this morning, I, I can't keep up with the number of, of language requests we've had. I think we'll probably end up doing a Mandarin, a Japanese, and maybe like a Spanish version. But other than that, uh, got to stick to the English for now. Do, do you know what? I, I am so, so excited about reading this book because uh, I think you're a fountain of knowledge in the industry, buddy. And what you don't know about self-storage isn't worth knowing. So uh, the fact that you go into the ups and the downs as well, I just think it's going to be thoroughly entertaining. And I love the title as well. So everybody go and get your copy, The Sexy Side of Self-Storage. John, if people want to find out more about you, where would they go, my friend? Yes. So you can go to our website, lindsayselfstoragegroup.com. You can always email me directly, john at lindsayselfstoragegroup.com. Uh, that's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. And if you're on WhatsApp, you're a national, feel free to hit me up. It's 1-919-381-7799. Yeah, do you know what? We almost fifty percent of our listeners are actually in America. Would you believe it or not? Considering it's a, a UK self storage podcast, it's incredible. So, Jojo, my virtual assistant, if you could put all them links in the show notes, that will be tremendous. Yep, John Lindsay, thank you so much for your time, buddy. I know you're a very, very busy man doing the rounds on these different podcasts. So, thank you for making time for us. We really, really appreciate it. And hopefully, we'll catch up soon, pal. Hey, thanks for hosting, man. Looking forward to it. <laughs>